Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf. And if you're wondering about the title of the video, uh, short but sweet, it's not the length of the video I'm talking about. <laughs> I haven't made a short video ever in my life, but it's about short books. Um, if you follow my channel, you probably know that in August, I again, like every year, I did a challenge I call 30 books in 30 days. So I tried to read 30 books in 30 days. I made a video about the tips and tricks. If you are interested in doing a challenge like that, whether it's, you know, the 20 books in 30 days or the seven books in seven days, but a, a challenge where you try to read more than you normally read. I will leave a link to that video down below. And one of the tricks um, is that I read shorter books, obviously, because I'm not Steve Donahue. I can't read 30, 900 page tomes in a month. Uh, but I don't want to read books just because they are short. Obviously, I want to read books because I want to read them. So what I do is I, um, if I come across a book that I really want to read, but that it's short, it, uh, I put it on a list and then I collect the, these books over the course of a couple of months or a year. And in August, when I do the challenge, I read those um, because I don't feel you know, for me, it doesn't make sense to read a book just because it has only 90 pages. Anyway, um, a, the, a couple of you asked me when I made this video about the ticks, uh, the ticks, yeah, I'm doing it again, like in the Friday Reads, the, the tips and tricks, what qualifies for me. First of all, if you do the challenge, you make the rules. For me, uh, a book qualifies if it has been individually published. In other words, it doesn't matter whether it's 60 pages or 85 and how many words and whether you would call it a novelette or a novella or a really long short story. As long as you can buy it as an individual book, it qualifies. And for me, also a short book, the books that I collect, are around 100 pages, but not more than 120, um, preferably around 100 or less. Anyway, the first book uh, I want to talk to you about that I read in August and that I really like because the, the uh, intention of this video is also to give you recommendations if you want to have short books incorporated in your reading for whatever reasons. These are the books that I can recommend. And the first one is this one, Elizabeth and Her German Garden by Vintage von Einem. No, by Elizabeth von Einem, um, published first in 1898. Elizabeth von Einem was a British novelist. Uh, she died in, 19, in the 1940s, if I remember correctly. Um, let, me, let me check that. Maybe that is just bullshit I'm now talking. Yeah, 1941. <laughs> It's not that bad, 1941. She was born in Australia, but she married into German nobility, uh, von Einem, hence the very German uh, last name. And she lived in Germany on the family estate in Prussia. And this is a highly autobiographical book, obviously, the name Elizabeth, uh, about a year in living in on that estate um, and trying to make, a, to create a garden. So she reflects on what plans to buy and what things to do, but it's also about family life, uh, about social life, um, um, about her husband, whom she calls the Wrath. Um, and it's very sarcastic, especially about marriage, especially about the neighbors and the social life. I love it. I love that tone of voice. It was a pleasure to read if you are into a combination of, you know, sarcastic feminist writings from 1898, plus a lot of really beautiful description of gardens and nature. This is the book for you, for sure. The next book I can recommend to you is nonfiction, because there's also shorter nonfictions, which you would call, you know, the essay form, a longer essay. Uh, but again, if it's published as an individual book, it qualifies. And this one um, has, I think, 60 pages or something like that. Uh, Ruth Ose Oseki, The Face. Um, I read it uh, as an ebook, uh, hence no 
physical copy to show you. Um, Ruth Oseki, of course, is a Japanese uh, American Canadian author uh, whom I absolutely love. Uh, she has a new novel coming out in September. I'm very much looking forward to that. I loved um, uh, the her previous a couple of her previous books that I read. I haven't read all of her backlist, but she's certainly an author that I gravitate towards. And when I saw that she published an essay in 2015 um, that was short, I it it made it on the list immediately. Now the the premise of this essay is that um, she would look at her face in the mirror for two hours and then write down what she thought about, what she saw in her face, but also the, you know, the sort of thought associations that came with it. I, I loved it. I thought it was, uh, it was really interesting to, to um, read about somebody who is, you know, t spending two hours looking at herself and what that means. But also, of course, she incorporates uh, things about um, you know, her beliefs and Buddhism and um, thoughts that crossed her mind while looking at herself. So I really, really enjoyed this book um, and I can hi highly recommend it if you want to, you know, delve into short fiction uh, by Ruth Otheki. And by the way, the book that I loved so much was, of course, A Tale of the Time be uh, for the Time Being. Anyway, the next book um, I read and really enjoyed um, was fiction again. Uh, Dor Dorothy Strachey, Olivia, first published in 1949 under a pseudonym. Uh, Dorothy Strachey uh, uh, was uh, an, a translator mainly. She was the first one to translate Freud into English, and she lived uh, from around 1865 uh, until 1960. Um, and this book was probably originally written in French, but we are not 100% sure. And it's just 100 pages. It's her only novel, and it's, again, highly autobiographical, like the one um, by Elizabeth von Einem, about a young girl uh, from a good family, uh, a British, and who is sent to Paris uh, to a finishing school and encounters a very seductive teacher there who lives with another teacher. The word lesbian is never used, um, but it is about lesbian relationships and about this more than just infatuation of this uh, student with her teacher. Um, I I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the writing. I like this kind of story. I mean, you have to, of course, um, uh, be aware of the fact if you're reading a short book, the story is also quite concise. Um, if you are, if you like um, the uh, Miss Jean Brody, for instance, or if you like uh, Colette's books about Claudine, then you will enjoy this. Um, I know that Sean from Sean the Book Maniac, he DNF'd it uh, because he thought it was incredibly boring. I don't think he is the target audience, maybe. Um, and I can see, well, that if you're not interested in this type of story, that it's boring. But I thought it was uh, quite um, engaging also because it's mysterious in a way what happens to the various persons so it has this mystery element uh, to it and I just like this type of story so give it a try if that sounds like something uh, that you might enjoy as well. We stay with fiction for my next recommendation uh, for those of you who are really into sci-fi uh, and want to read short books, um, good science fiction but short, I can recommend Martha Wells' The Murderbot Diaries. Um, they are four books in the original series. They are now coming more books uh, in the series, but the, the original had four books, and each of the books has been uh, published individually and is about 100 20 pages or something. I think it's three hours in the audio because I listened to two of them uh, on audio. Um, Martha Wells, of course, is um, a science fiction writer, obviously, and I love her Murderbot Diaries, featuring this main character who calls himself 
the murder bot. Uh, it's a, 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 a artificial intelligence robot kind of person uh, with special uh, capabilities, of course, enhanced capabilities. Um, it's a um, the work that the murder bot does is a security unit. Um, so, in other words, it's owned by a corporation, and the corporation gives it to their clients in order to provide security bodyguard, basically. Um, and then we follow from the first uh, one um, until the the fourth with sort of concludes this this first chunk of story uh, we follow the murder bot uh, trying to you know find um sense in life and he calls himself murder bot because in his view he did something in the past that qualifies as murder very sarcastic personality uh, he doesn't like interaction with humans he can pass as a human from uh, the way uh, he looks and I think they are just hilarious it, they're full of action always uh, so there's a lot of you know fighting going on where the murder bot has to employ all the various weapons that he uh, can use uh, but they are also character studies of this very complicated self-loathing uh, um, artificial intelligence I love them and they qualify and I read two of them in August uh, uh, for my 30 in 30 challenge. The next short book with just under 100 pages is nonfiction again. And for me, it was a reread, Mary Beard, Women and Power, a manifesto, first published in 2017. Uh, the book consists of two essays. Uh, one is about the silencing of women since you know, Greek mythology, um, Helen, uh, uh, and uh, especially Penelope, who was silenced by uh, her son. Uh, never mind. And the other one is specifically about women in power and how we treat women who are powerful. Um, uh, Mary Beard is an, an English um, uh, classicist. She wrote a fantastic book um, about the Roman Empire, but she also engages in political discussions, especially about feminism. Um, and like I said, this one are two, there's two essays that she originally gave as two speeches. Um, and I really like the um, the look back that she employs in these essays to, you know, where certain um, stereotypes about women talking of, or about women in power come from and how old they are. If you look back at the Odyssey, you know, Greek mythology. Um, so she looks at, she looks back um, um, at history and mythology, but she also looks at the present day and how women have um, to deal with certain hurdles if you are powerful and if you open your mouth. So if you are interested in feminism and want to have a short, um, two short essays about specific aspects of feminism, um, I can highly recommend this book. I give this book as a present a lot because it's, I always feel if I give books as a present, it shouldn't be too um, intruding. In other words, you know, I don't give a 900 page book as a present very often unless I know the reader very well and she or he wants to have that book. But if you want to bring something uh, for a person who reads but might not, you know, if if you give this to somebody and they don't read it and they don't feel obliged because it's so short anyway. But I reread it and again, I really enjoyed it. The next two books um, I want to mention I can both recommend to you, but uh, I did not read those books in August. I had them on, at least not this August, I had them on my list as possible rereads, short books rereads, because that's also always what I do, that I have a couple of books, the shorter ones that I want to reread, and I put them on the list for August, uh, but I didn't um, uh, get to them, uh, and I finished the challenge before I could get to them. But it's always good to have, you know, some books in in the back uh, if you need them. Um, the first one uh, is a, a book by a Senegalese author, um, and I'd rather not mispronounce her name, Mariama Ba, uh, so long a letter translated from the French by Modupe Baudet Thomas. 
Um, the book uh, was originally published in 1980 and the English translation about nine years later. Um, Maria Maba, as I said, is a Senegalese author, and I love this book. It's under 100 pages. It's written uh, in letters, in letter form, um, by the main character, a recently widowed woman who writes letters to her best friend uh, about her recent widowhood. That is the the, the, the reason why she starts writing. And then she uh, talks about mourning, about grief, uh, but also she reveals to her best friend uh, something about the, the marriage who lasts for 30 years, the circumstances of her husband's death. Um, there are stories of betrayal, of grieving. Um, yeah, I thought it's fabulous and I really <laughs> want to reread it, but I didn't reread it um, in August. But it's a, 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 if you also want to maybe incorporate, you know, translated fiction in your, in your reading and want to try a shorter book by an African author, this one is a book that I would highly recommend, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that you will, will enjoy it. I can't be sure, but I, I hope that you will enjoy it. And my last rec recommendation is, again, nonfiction, and again, would have been a reread for me, but I didn't get to it. Um, and that is uh, I Remain in Darkness by French author Annie Ernaud, translated from the French by... Leslie, Tanya Leslie, Tanya Leslie, uh, published in France in 1996 and in the English translation three years later, 1999. Uh, again, under under 100 pages, um, Ernaud, uh, a French writer who mainly engages in autobiographical, non-fiction, autofiction kind of thing. And this one, um, uh, I Remain in Darkness, is no exception. It's about um, the struggle with dementia uh, of her mother. And the, the book is a chronicle in diary form uh, about um, when the mother lived with uh, Annie Ernaud for um, a, a period before, a time period before she had to um, be hospitalized. Um, it's not a book that I uh, easily would give to somebody uh, not knowing maybe the family situation because it is quite confronting, uh, confrontational in terms of, um, you know, she talks about uh, uh, also the physical aspects of the decay, uh, you know, the naked body of her mother. And if you are in a situation, you know, where maybe a parent or an other elderly loved one goes through dementia. I wouldn't give you that book because it, it. I had to know you pretty well in order to give you that book. But it is, if you're interested in a very personal account about a, a, a woman who takes care of an elderly relative suffering from dementia and it's quite raw, um, then I can certainly recommend this book. It's a very good book. Uh, hence, I, otherwise, I wouldn't have wanted to reread it. But it's also not a book for everyone, if that makes sense. So there you go. But these are the books, most of them I read in August, and two of them I didn't uh, reread in August as I had planned, but I can still recommend them. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these short book recommendations. Uh, I'm looking forward to your comments as always, and I'll see you all soon in the next one.